Hi, welcome to Big Data Analytics tutorial. In this video, I will discuss uh, what are what is uh, data warehouse architecture. Uh, what are the things we need to consider while designing an architecture, and what are the different steps? So those are the things we will be discussing. Uh, these are the contents of my video. First, I will discuss uh, what is data warehouse architecture. Uh, while designing this data warehouse architecture, we need to understand uh, what are the data sources, these transformation processes, uh, data warehouse design, uh, like we need to use some uh, schemas like uh, star schema and uh, slow, uh, snowflake uh, schema. So, I will be discussing what is uh, star schema in this case. And uh, next, I will discuss how to access uh, the data from uh, data warehouse and uh, what are the different uh, practices or you can say best practices uh, for data warehouse uh, design. So, those are the things I will be discussing in this uh, video. So, first I will start with uh, data warehouse architecture. Uh, these are the four key elements of uh, uh, the data warehouse architecture. It starts with uh, data sources. Uh, next is something called as uh, data transformation. Next, we need to uh, think whether we need to design a data warehouse or uh, uh, we need to design a data mart. And finally, we need to design something called as uh, uh, data warehouse access uh, where uh, user can access uh, the data uh, from the data warehouse uh, for it for their purpose for example they want to do some analysis so they want to do access that particular data so that is the final step of uh, data warehouse architecture so what are the data warehouse uh, sources so there are some different sources one is called as external uh, operation source and there is something called as uh, external source what is operational source so ERP systems uh, generate data continuously, enterprise resource uh, programs generate the data continuously. Uh, like you can say that um, that's, a, that's a one set of uh, source. The another set of source is the legacy system like uh, the servers and so on generate uh, the data uh, something called as uh, the log files. So that's another uh, data source in this case. Uh, the third one is something called as a point of sale uh, and the retail industry when it comes to uh, the uh, can say that uh, the the checkout points where we use to collect the uh, customer information that is nothing but uh, the point of sale like uh, what is the customer name his email id mobile number and so on such kind of things along with that we store something called as what he bought on that particular day so that is that kind of data is called as point of sale rfi id systems like uh, uh, whenever we do some kind of analysis uh, in uh, store data in uh, uh, organization we have something called as RFID systems so usually uh, we store that particular data into a system that kind of data is called as RFID system data it is not only in uh, retail industry when, when it comes to organization where uh, login information is maintained when a particular person has entered a room when he has uh, gone out of that particular room and so on so such kind of things can be um, tracked with the help of RFID systems the third one is something called last one is something called as uh, the web usage in this case, uh, what happens is uh, usually when a person uh, accesses the, some of the web pages, that particular information will be stored, stored at the server side as well as on the particular browser, which can be used to serve that particular uh, uh, the person's request uh, better in the future. For example, a particular person has browsed a certain website, uh, certain category of websites, you can say, and when he tries to do some uh, browsing again, uh, we can give the related uh, website so that he can easily access that particular information, whatever is needed for him. So that is something called as a web usage data. Uh, the another uh, data set, uh, data source is something called as uh, external data source. Uh, here we will get uh, data from suppliers. So suppliers, uh, like what is the supplier name, what he has supplied, when he has supplied, what is the cost, and so on. Such kind of information is nothing but a supplier related data. Customer related data is nothing like uh, the customers comes to the organization and uh, they may do some things like they may buy some product, they may sell some products and so on. Such kind of uh, data, what is, what is the customer name, what is the his email id, mobile number, what he has bought, what he has sold, what he has sold in that particular organization, what is the cost of that particular product and so on. Such kind of thing is nothing but a customer related data. The last kind of data is something called as uh, government related data. So government used to enforce some laws or rules on the particular organization. So that kind of uh, data is nothing but a government uh, related data. So these are all the uh, data sources uh, through which uh, data is collected uh, into an organization. Now once the data is collected, uh, the next thing what we need to do is we need to store that particular data. Uh, either we need to uh, think of a data mart or a data warehouse. A data mart is like uh, uh, we can store that particular data uh, for a particular functionality or a data warehouse is for entire enterprise so that's a data warehouse 
So before we do that particular thing, uh, what we can do here is we can do something called we need to do something called as data transformation. That is, we have collected the data. Now we cannot directly store that particular data into a data warehouse, or we cannot uh, store the data into data mart. What we need to do is we need to do some kind of transformation. So what is that? The very first thing what we need to do is we need to select the data. Whatever the data you have collected, select that particular data means so we need to take some part of that particular data and then extract the data. So we have selected the data, now you need to extract it from that particular uh, source. Maybe it's an enterprise uh, ERP system or legacy system, point of sale data or whatever. Maybe you need to select one of these particular source and then select that particular data. The next one is very important. That is something called as cleanse data. Cleanse data is nothing but what? We need to clean the data. Whatever you have collected a data, that particular data has to be cleaned. Uh, before you store that particular data into a data mart or uh, uh, you can say that uh, data warehouse. What is cleansing? Uh, sometimes what happens is uh, the data collected may be consisting of uh, irrelevant data or there may be something called as uh, missing data or maybe something called as outliers. So what we need to do is we need to uh, remove such kind of things and then we need to uh, store that clean data into uh, what we can say that uh, in a data mart or a data warehouse. So that's the next thing. After cleaning, what we need to do is uh, there is something called as a computed data fields. For example, I want to calculate the uh, total sales of a particular day or uh, total sale amount you can say. So what we need to do here is we need to identify how many products were sold, what is the cost of each product. If you know that part, I think you can easily calculate total uh, value of a sold uh, value of uh, sold on a particular day. So that can be calculated. So what we need to do is uh, we need to calculate such kind of computed fields. Sometimes what we do is uh, we just uh, read uh, what we can say that uh, the date of birth of a particular person. So when we do that particular thing, we want to store uh, the age of that particular person. So in such case what we need to do is we need to compute the age depending on the date of birth. So that is nothing but uh, the computed data fields. So that is what actually we need to do. So after that uh, there is something called as integrate data. Integration is nothing but uh, uh, when we have a data warehouse or a data mart, Usually the data is collected from multiple uh, departments. Uh, each department will give uh, the same data but from different location and different departments. The same work is happening at different locations. So we need to collect the data from those particular uh, locations and departments and integrate that data uh, so that uh, you will get one uh, what we can say that uh, data warehouse. And once you do all these things, so selecting a data source, extracting the data from that particular data source, cleaning that particular data and then computing uh, some of the uh, fields which are in, uh, necessary for your analysis and integrating the data from different uh, data uh, departments or functional areas we need to load that particular data into uh, either in a data mart or into a data warehouse so here comes uh, we need to understand uh, whether I want to design uh, a data warehouse for an entire enterprise or I want to design it for a uh, only a particular functional area so that is nothing but a data mart. We need to decide on that particular thing. Once you do that particular part, uh, we need to select that particular approach. Uh, that is uh, data mart is nothing but we can say that uh, the bottom up approach and uh, data warehouse is nothing but a top down approach. We have discussed this particular thing in the previous video. The link for the same is given in the description below. Uh, you can watch that particular video to understand what is uh, data mart and uh, data warehouse and all and how they are different from one another also you can understand from that particular video now once you store that particular data what is the last thing the last thing is what it is just uh, storing the data doesn't help the organization we have a data we don't do anything on that particular data it does not have any value to that particular organization what we need to do is we need to access that particular data and do some analysis so directly you can access it or if you access that particular data and then analyze the data and then give that particular results to the user. So that is the another thing. So how all uh, users access that particular data is OLAP tools access that particular data. Uh, reporting tools access that particular data. The reporting is nothing but we want to create some kind of uh, charts or something like that. I want to create a pie chart of a uh, given data. Okay, so total sales. Uh, monthly basis this month so and so sales this is the second month so and so sales that's a one thing quarterly uh, pie charts I want to generate quarterly bar charts I want to generate Th they are nothing but uh, the reporting tools so we need to uh, uh, that there should be an app, uh, facility for uh, reporting tools to access that particular data so that is the another thing in uh, data warehouse architecture there should be something called as uh, dashboards 
dashboards are nothing but like uh, it's a graphical user interface uh, where user can uh, uh, have a different icons and when you click on that particular icon you should get some different uh, uh, results so that is nothing but a dashboard the queries like uh, we should have something called as uh, uh, the search kind of thing or you can say that there should be something called as uh, multiple uh, drop down menus where you can select some uh, options and uh, we should be able to get the results for that particular option and the next one is uh, like uh, we should provide or whenever you design an architect uh, data warehouse or uh, uh, you, have, you create an architecture for a data warehouse uh, it should be accessible on mobile devices also it should not be only on uh, the desktop or uh, the laptop it should be accessible on uh, mobile devices also and it should you should have some custom it should be accessible on custom apps also that's one more thing and apart from all these things if you just access that particular data that is not enough what we need to do is uh, that particular data should be in a position to be used for a different uh, data mining techniques there are n number of data mining techniques are there you can go with the supervised machine learning techniques unsupervised machine learning techniques statistical analysis and so on so all these particular data mining techniques should be in a position to access that particular data and use that data for uh, extracting the insights from that particular data so that is nothing but uh, data mining so these are all the uh, users who access that particular data or different applications access that particular data so whenever we uh, design an architecture for a data warehouse these are the four things are very important things one is uh, we need to understand what are the different uh, data sources for that particular uh, data warehouse once you understand those particular data sources uh, it may be operational or external data sources we need to select uh, that particular source extract the data from that particular source clean that particular data compute the different uh, data fields integrate the different data from different uh, locations and load that particular data into either uh, data mart or data warehouse depending on your requirement and finally that data should be in a position to access uh, by different users and the applications so like olap tools reporting tools dashboards queries it should be accessible on mobile devices as well as uh, custom apps and it should be in a position to uh, be used by different uh, data mining uh, applications or uh, algorithms for analysis purpose so this is how actually the data warehouse architecture looks like or you can say that there are different steps of uh, designing an architecture for data warehouse so the same thing has been explained over here okay so very important thing we need to think uh, remember here is uh, whenever we want to design uh, a data warehouse uh, that is uh, a storing part when it comes to storing part we need to remember one thing like uh, whether we want to store a uh, data into a uh, star schema or you can say that uh, snowflake uh, schema okay uh, i have already discussed this thing also in the previous video like uh, data warehouse uh, is not a normalized uh, data or can say data warehouse when it comes to relational database management system uh, the data is normalized in that case but when it comes to data warehouse Uh, the data warehouse, uh, uh, the data is not normalized. Uh, means uh, uh, there is maybe a possibility of redundancy and so on. So that is how actually the thing. So there is one thing uh, like uh, we can use star schema or we can use something called as uh, snowflake schema. The star schema looks something like this. We have something called as a central table, uh, which contains what we can say that different fields. Uh, it does not contain um, much information about that particular uh, fields. for example if you see that item id that's the only thing available here but we don't know what is the name of that particular item we don't have the in integer number that's item id but we don't know what is that particular uh, uh, item id is all about we don't know anything about item name item item cost and so on we don't know anything about it so what we have here is we have an associated table for that uh, item id associated item name if you want to put item uh, cost also you can put it over here one more column so this is how actually uh, the table looks like there is a central table and uh, along with that particular central table we have a small small tables for each and every central table uh, take an example of uh, region id region id means uh, what is the name of the region id will not be stored into the central table only an integer number is present and region id uh, the region id name address everything will be present in uh, another table uh, second level uh, the next one you can take one more example is like uh, sales uh, id sales person id his name his first name last name nothing will be stored only what is stored his person id uh, sales person id will be stored into the central data but when it comes to different uh, tables uh, different uh, information will be stored here so this is what is called as a star schema here uh, this is the one uh, uh, 
popular uh, schema used in uh, data warehouse uh, design but when it comes to snowflake uh, design what is snowflake design is uh, like uh, we used that uh, one level of uh, uh, summarization in this case like uh, at the central table we have only the ids or integer number for those uh, numbers we have something called as small small tables which will give the in detail uh, uh, can say that uh, the information in snowflake uh, design uh, what we can do is we can have multiple levels of such things like in this case item id it is as present at the central table and uh, there is a table which will uh, give a detailed de description about that uh, item id but in snowflake we can have one more level we can have one more level we can have any number of levels in the snowflake so that is nothing but uh, snowflake uh, architecture over here so this is a very important thing you need to remember whenever you design uh, data warehouse either we need to use a star schema or snowflake or there are a number of uh, schemas are there but uh, the maximum or you can say that the uh, you can say the popular schema in uh, data warehouse design is the star schema over here so in this video i have discussed uh, uh, what is a data warehouse architecture and what are the different uh, things we need to remember while designing an uh, data warehouse architecture and what are the different steps we need to follow uh, if you want to design a data warehouse architecture i hope this particular concept is quite clear uh, to you if you like the video do like and share with your friends press the subscribe button for more videos press the bell icon for regular updates thank you for watching